classes aren't in session, but the Tigers are going back to work for a critical Ivy League game. Tonight, the reigning champion from Harvard have made the trip to Princeton to take on the Tigers from the Grill Court at Jadwin Gymnasium. Hello and welcome to Princeton. I'm Eamon McEnany. Happy to be joined by the first two-time Ivy League Player of the Year, Craig Robinson. And Craig, these two teams have combined to play just three league games so far, but there is a sense of urgency here tonight. Absolutely, Eamon. And given the fact that this conference plays a true round-robin schedule and has no conference tournament, makes these games even more important. Har you, you've got Harvard, who doesn't want to go 0 and 2 and they've got three more road games in in an upcoming week here and they're coming off a home loss to Dartmouth the 173rd all-time meeting between these two schools Princeton has dominated historically but Harvard with a little juice now too straight yeah they've got uh, they're doing they're doing a fantastic job Tommy Amaker is doing a, a great job he's doing it with recruiting he's doing it with coaching and he's doing it by changing their culture and one of the big-time players he's recruited to Cambridge the reigning Ivy League player of the year Wesley Saunders Wesley Saunders is averaging 15.6 which is third in the Ivy League what's more impressive is that he's doing this by getting to the line almost six times per game and for Princeton the reigning Ivy rookie of the year Spencer Weiss Having a big sophomore season. Eamon, Spencer Weiss is doing his damage from downtown, averaging 13 points a game with 50%, 53% of his shots coming from beyond the arc, and he's knocking down 43% of them. Tommy Emmerker says he's very crafty and knows how to break you down. We take a look at the starting lineups. First for the visitors from Harvard, Kenyatta Smith missing his third straight game in the middle, so Zena Odasimwa gets the start for Harvard. Siani Chambers, Tommy Emmerker says, is their most important player. For Princeton, the offense goes through the Hill School grad Hans Brace and the freshman Amir Bell from up the road at East Brunswick has started every game of his rookie campaign. Harvard in the road black, Princeton in the home white. Our officials today, Alvin Cox, Dennis Alaco, and Bill McCarthy. It'll be Miller jumping against Erosamuan. Alvin Cox to throw it up and we are underway. And this is Harvard going to work first. Siani Chambers walks it up. Well, I know that, that Princeton wants to get the ball out of Siani Chambers' hand. He does as much damage assisting as he does scoring. Muando Masi can't hit the layup. 15 on the shot clock. And Osamon gets it back, rejected by Miller. That's his 23rd block of the year. Mitch Henderson's staff has done a great job upgrading the athleticism on this Princeton team. Here's Brace, the junior. Now the freshman, Amir Bell. Back to Brace for three. Too strong, rebound Chambers. Brace is a tough matchup. He's able to hit from outside as well as get to the basket. Now Saunders. You can see Princeton packing it in. Harvard's doing, having a tough time this season making outside shots. Saunders and Chambers have struggled lately. Now Saunders in the paint, kicks it out to Moandu Masi, and he hits. So Harvard on the board first. Mondo Misi showing his mid-range jump shot there. Tommy Amaker's done a fantastic job in the recruiting of these players. A lot of contact, no whistle. Chambers looking to push, doesn't have numbers, so he pulls up. Short. Rebound Miller. And there's a foul on Saunders. Tommy Amaker in his eighth season with Harvard, 150 career wins with the Crimson. His third stop in his coaching career. Started up the road at Seton Hall, went to Ann Arbor, and as you mentioned, really changed the culture and the mentality of this Harvard basketball program. Yeah. When I played here, the big matchup and rivalry was with Penn, and Tommy's done such a fantastic job that it seems like this is more of a rivalry now. Brace again for three. Can't hit. Miller keeps it alive for the Tigers. Uncharacteristic offensive rebound for the Tigers. 
Here's Weiss. It's a step. Another three ball for the Tigers, short. Princeton. By Princeton's going to have to make some outside shots if they want to win this game. Inside to Adosimwa. Spins. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound Cook. Cook, a sophomore out of Winnetka, Illinois, in the Chicago area. You probably had some big games against New Trier High School, right, Craig? I, I, I have played against some players from New Trier. I was in a much tougher league. <laughs> I knew something was coming. I knew I'd get some <laughs> kind of reaction. Short on the drive, and then they throw it away. So Princeton gets it back. Weiss has not forced the issue here early. Gets it over to Brace. Inside to Miller. Now Cook on the drive. Gets a step on Saunders. Shovels it over. And there's a foul. Mitch Henderson in his fourth season at his alma mater. Winning seasons in each of his first three campaigns. Foul goes against Edosamon. A great player in his own right here running the offense. Eamon, you can see that both teams are playing a little tight here. And it's, it's just a function of the fact that this game is so important. And we talked a little bit at the outset how the way the Ivy League is set up with the, the, the true round robin and no, no, no conference tournament, every one of these games are important. Short there and to heighten that for this weekend, you're Harvard, you're going on the road to play Princeton and Penn. You can't have an offer. You can't have an offer, and then the next week you're on the road again against the tough Yale ball club. It's a Yale ball club that knocked off Connecticut. Tom Yanker says our message, don't think about it. Don't think it out, play it out. Inside. Coley can't hit. Princeton ball. Princeton still looking for a bit of a rhythm here on the offensive end. Cook on the drive. Hammered. And there's a whistle from Alvin Cox. Really nice drive by Cook. Oh, that looked pretty clean. Maybe there was a body on the other side there. That looked like a clean block by Wesley Saunders. See, it's with the body on. He knows someone. So that sends Cook to the line. 76% free throw shooter can't hit the first. Right, so number 15, Corbin Miller. And 24. I know the fans probably don't realize it, but you can feel the pressure coming off of both of these teams. Guys who normally make foul shots are missing them. They're missing Harvard missed the uh, chippy down there on the other end. So we're all even at two. Tommy Emmerker sending out some subs. Corbin Miller and Jonah Travis on the floor. These two have been spark plugs lately off the bench. Check out Tamando to see. He doesn't take the three. Miller is a three-point specialist. Rwanda Messi can't hit. Loose ball. He gets his own rebound. One of the points of emphasis at practice. Defensive rebounding. Allen. Steps for Saunders. A slow start here in this critical Ivy League game. Tigers looking to improve to 2 0 in conference play. When we take when we return, we'll take a look at life as a Princeton Scholar athlete. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dish. Only the hopper from Dish gives you the power to watch all your live and recorded TV anywhere. Good look at Bill Bradley. Dollar Bill's retired jersey here in the rafters at Jadwin Gym. We could use a little Bill Bradley going to the hoop right now as the two teams have combined one for 12 from the field. And we take a look. Maybe there's a reason why the teams aren't in a rhythm. A bit of a sporadic schedule for the student athletes. We take a look at Princeton. Back on January 10th, they rallied from 15 down to knock off Penn. Then they got locked in in the studies and the final exams. And, Coach, you know what that's about a little bit. Yeah, you know, most of the fans out there don't realize how, how hard it is for these guys to get back on track. They've been off for a long time where they've had some involuntary, uh, some voluntary practices just to keep them in some sort of shape. But they've been writing a lot of papers and taking a lot of exams. Coach Henderson goes to the bench to send out Henry Caruso. He was a spark plug in the win over Penn with a career-high 23. And there, there was a 
Nice backdoor opportunity to pass just a little bit out of reach. Two turnovers Grace. already for Princeton. Here's Caruso on the ball. Chambers loses him. Now in the corner to Miller. Might have gotten, gotten away with a walk there. Harvard looking to get Saunders and Chambers on track. Chambers for three. Short. Run down by Weiss. Gets it over to the freshman Bell. Now Brace with a matchup on Chambers. Baby hook hits. Now that's not your traditional Princeton offense right there. That's just straight basketball. You see a matchup with a big man on a little one. Mouse in the house. Take him down low. There's a foul as Jonah Travis was going to the hoop. And you take a look at Hans Brace. He's got Solani Chambers on him. He just backs him down. And nice little baby hook. Real easy. Good way to get off the schneid there with a nice, easy basket. Foul goes on Brace on the other end. Now Jonah Travis, the senior out of Minnesota. You know, Eamon, is I'm a little surprised to see Harvard not putting some pressure on Princeton to try and speed this up. But it could just be a function of the fact that nobody's scoring. You don't, you're not able to set up your press. Ben Hazel in for Brace. Hazel has played well lately with 16 points in the last two games. After seeing his playing time reduced. Jonah hits them both to even it up at four. Coley back on the floor now as Muanda Masi gets a break. Here we go with a little pressure here. Junior on freshman. Now Caruso loses it. Gets it back. Don't stand up. That's a ball. Yep. Bill McCarthy with the call. Three turnovers now for the home team. You know, Eamon, it amazes me how, how many basketball rules that basketball players actually don't know. And I really think that's a function of playing video games instead of going out to the park and playing basketball. They don't call traveling in a Madden, Madden hoop? Well, they call it for you. They call it for you. They call it, but they call it for you. Now Chambers. Saunders has not been a factor yet. Now he has a three ball. It is a good sign for Harvard fans. At practice yesterday, talking to Coach Henderson, he said that if Wesley Saunders is making a shot, it's going to be a long night for the Tigers. He has not been playing well on the road lately. Tommy Edmonds was looking for that to turn around. Weiss, wild off the glass, and now Saunders. Forcing the issue over to Miller. That's his game. Both coaches said he could be an X factor here tonight. And the sophomore out of Utah makes it a six point Harvard lead. Back to back threes for the Crimson. Russo on the back door cut, loses Saunders, and hits off the window. Coley attacks, gets it over to Saunders. Quick release, short. Bell with the rebound. You can see Harvard. Part of their offense is shoot and then crash the boards. Caruso, bounce pass inside. Miller can't finish. Tempo a, picking up here. It's going to be a long night if Princeton can't make layups. Nicoli will go to the line. Solani Chambers does such a good job of finding players. He finds Saunders for a three. And then... Coley short on that free. Free throw, so now mass substitutions for Coach Henderson as Saunders gets a break for Harvard. Saunders is, is, is having a fantastic year. He's got another chance, he got a, a chance to be a two time Ivy League player of the year. Third in scoring. 
and he, and he helps this team out in so many ways. Second leading assist man. That's an exclusive club, that two-time Ivy League Player of the Year, right? <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> Only four players have won that award twice, starting with my colleague. And a reminder that ESPNU Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy features a Big 12 showdown at 2 Eastern as TCU takes on Iowa State, also live on Watch ESPN. So the Big 12 this year has established itself as one of the most competitive and deepest leagues in the country. Just saw a fantastic game with TCU in Kansas, and TCU's having a tough time. Here's Matt Brown in the corner for three off the side of the backboard. Caruso. Princeton's got to take advantage of this poor shooting by Harvard. There's Clay Wilson. And it feels, it feels like the athleticism of Harvard is actually bothering Princeton. Jonah Travis with a block on Caruso. 15 on the shot clock. Ben Hazel. To inbound, but not before substitutions is Wesley Saunders and Weiss back on the floor. And Brace as well. Brace checks back in. And coming out is Alec Brown. Someone needs to get open. And they send it to the backcourt. Weiss runs it down. 12 minutes left to play in a slow starting first half here. Eight on the shot clock. Hazel drives. Finds the open man in the corner for three. And no kicks. To bring the Tigers within two. Both teams looking a little rusty, coming off of exams. 15 to shoot. They dump it down to Travis Jonas, short. Race goes up high for the rebound. Princeton looking to tie or take the lead with a three. Cook on the drive, splits the double. Brace for the lead. Short. Rebound to Cole. Brace just short on that, just a bit. Travis, good recovery by Brace. It was a good repost there by Travis. I thought Saunders could have thrown that back in there to him. Saunders now. Over to Brown. Ten on the shot clock. Is it great defense or just sputtering offense? They back it up now. So the high screen was five. McCauley's going to have to create. I don't think he recognizes. He gets it off before the shot clock expires and hits. Just what Coach Amaker was looking for. That's one of those where Coach Amaker is like, no, no, no. Nice shot. <laughs> Not exactly what they were working on today at the shoot around. Cook. Brace again for three. He's just not feeling it tonight behind the arc. Very, very hard shot. Miller from deep. Bullseye. And a quick timeout from Coach Henderson. He shot that one with confidence. Here you've, you've got uh, O'Coley right at the end of the shot clock with nice arc. And then you got a three-pointer here by Miller way behind the three-point line. He apparently doesn't have any rust to knock off. He had 16 earlier this season in the win at Dartmouth. He came in as the team leader in three made, threes made with 40. Both coaches thought he could be the X factor. We mentioned Tommy Amaker, well known now with the success, three straight NCAA tournaments, two NCAA tournament wins. But certainly. Waking up a dormant program when he came to Cambridge. 
He sure, he sure has. And out of the timeout, they throw it away. So there's another break in the action. Coach Henderson's team needs to regroup. Down by seven at home. There is pursuit of perfection in the SEC, in the ACC, and also in the Ivy League with the Princeton women's team, the Tigers. Undefeated 17-0 and on the road tonight with a critical game at Harvard. Well, hopefully they won't be as rusty as the men here tonight. Coach Bangert's got that team playing really well, Eamon. I saw them early in the season at Michigan and, and won that game by 30. All right, take us inside the Princeton men huddle right there. Really, not really in a rhythm whatsoever. What do you think the message was in that huddle? The message is we've got to get some stuff close. we got to get some baskets closer in so that we can score and stop trying to live on three-point shots. Rondo Messi with the lefty floater doesn't go, but he'll go to the line. Alan Miller is first. Four team fouls on the Tigers. And you can see Tommy Amaker went right into the paint with their shooting woes. In his huddle, he said, let's get something down low where we either score or get fouled. Now we'll probably see a little bit of full court pressure here to keep, keep it on Princeton. Largest lead of the ball game for the Crimson. Who's going to get on track offensively for the Tigers? Here's Weiss. Coley on him. Now the freshman drives on the junior. Gets it back to Miller. Gets called for steps instead of the bump. So well, another turnover. Make that five turnovers in the last 12 possessions for Pete Miller and the Tigers. Well, in talking to Mitch Henderson at the shoot-around and at practice yesterday, it was imperative that they execute. And what they're missing today is execution. Can't turn the ball over. Have to run your stuff the right way. Saunders, the lob. Coley. Harvard in complete control right now. Really nice pass. And that's just another example of how Wesley Saunders can kill you. He's great scoring. He's great rebounding. But he's their second leading assist man. 8-0 Crimson run. Another turnover. Coley gets down on the deck to come up with it. And Weiss makes matters worse by reaching in. Here you got, there, you, everybody's got their eyes on Saunders and he makes a nice pass into Coley. Wesley Saunders. Los Angeles, Compton Magic AAU team, Windward High School. And he had 24 and 7 in the two wins over Princeton last year. Harvard looking for its first three game winning streak against Princeton since the 1984-85 season. Down low to Coley, goes up strong off the glass, too strong. Rebound brace. This Harvard looks like they're operating at a different pace than Princeton is. Now again, Princeton rallied from down 15 against Penn. So not foreign territory, and their Chambers gets called for well, the foul. Eamon, you can see the last couple of times down, Princeton's tried to work the ball inside, trying to draw a foul or trying to get an easy basket right around the rim. Now here's Bell, the post up. Another turnover. Four straight turnovers. Nope. They're going to say it stays here. But if Princeton loves Amir Bell. He's a, a high major recruit that they got to stay home here. But he's still a freshman, making freshman mistakes. And Cook drills to three. He has seven. Princeton's 12. Chambers quickly the other way. Saunders with a hand in his face. Air ball. Rebound by Ben Hazel. Hazel all the way to the hoop. He'll go to the line.
Tigers having issues with the ball, but a little bit of mojo right now, down by seven. Princeton looking to improve to 2-0 in Ivy League play, but trailing Harvard 19-12 with 7.54 left in the first half. And the dream of the 2015 college football playoff starts with National Signing Day. ESPN used 11 hours of coverage with feature reporters at more than a dozen college campuses and live player announcements, including six of the top ten players. National Signing Day presented by Northwestern Mutual Wednesday at 8 a.m. Coach, the first step is to sign them, then you got to give them plays, and then you got to go inside the play and execute them. And here's a great play drawn up by Coach Henderson. Usually the guy who sets the first screen gets himself open because he's trying to help someone else. Here you see Stephen Cook set a small little flash screen, and then he gets a screen for himself wide open. Splash, three-pointer. Cook, two of three from the field. The rest of the Tigers, two of ten from the field. Coach Henderson, little known fact about Coach Henderson, drafted by the Yankees as an outfielder back in 1994. So a tremendous athlete at Culver Military Academy before deciding to play basketball at Princeton. Hazel hits them both. So even though it feels like Harvard's up 15, it's still a five-point ball game. It's just the, the sluggishness is right there, and the, this, this game isn't out of anyone's hands right now. So now Saunders out there with Luando Masi, Akoli, Miller, and Chambers here. Saunders with some contact, too strong. Wesley Saunders, Wesley Saunders has, as I said at the open, he gets to the line at least six times a game. That body. Now Caruso. The refs are letting him play. They went right at Muando Messi, and there was contact, but no whistle. Now Chambers gets a step on Brace, but Brace with the rejection. Tough break for Princeton as Muando Messi is there to clean it up. Well, neither one of these teams are shooting well from the, the field, but Harvard's doing a better job on the offensive boards. And when they miss a shot, it's almost another offense when they send guys to the board to clean it up. Hazel in the corner. Here's Brace being guarded by Rondo Messi. Back out to Hazel for three. The South Pole drills it. Hazel! Once again, he gave this team a lift against Penn. Had a solid game against Rowan. And has provided energy here tonight. S senior experience. Ben Hazel not afraid to be out here with this first championship team. Now Saunders. Miller gets a good look at a three. That one doesn't go, and Brace gets Do another rebound. Dodge, Princeton dodged the bullet there. That shot looked like it was going in. Good hands by Chambers. Looks like he studied up on the backcourt offense. Miller try it again. No such luck for the Tigers on that one. When you have a shooter like Miller, you can't, you have to find him in transition. And that's got to have Coach Henderson going crazy over there on the sideline. They worked on that at practice. Fine Miller. Cook. Been the offense here tonight. He continues. He is keeping Princeton in this ball game. He has 10. Well, when you can make threes the way Princeton can, you're always in it. A little 1 3 1 action here. Defense is set up to get steals. Miller, though, zone buster. Now that was a contested shot that Miller made there. He has nine. Cook inside to Caruso. Tough angle. Tough whistle against Saunders. At, take a look here. Stephen Cook gets a nice setup three. And then Miller down on the other end in the quarter. Bada bing! All over your nice Ivy League suit. Dartmouth's here tomorrow, right? 
Dartmouth is here tomorrow. Isn't that the school Michael Corleone yes. went to? <laughs> to, to just that elaborate is. on your Godfather reference? It is. This business is not for you. We could be here all night doing that one, Coach. <laughs> Jonah Travis on the floor for Crimson, along with Matt Brown. And Caruso goes to the bench. Weiss back out there. We mentioned the pursuit of perfection with the Princeton women. How about the Virginia Cavaliers? A huge one Saturday night at home against Duke. A Duke team that's reeling a bit. But the Coach K picked up career win number 1,000. Notre Dame with an exciting win in South Bend. Be good to see that pack line defense against the Blue Devils. Chambers straight away. So Harvard up 10 on the road. Harvard doing a fantastic job executing their offense, making shots, and when they miss, they get the offensive rebound. Backdoor cut to Hazel. Nicely done. Look for Miller, and then Hazel to change of hands. Textbook Princeton offense. Yeah. Dribble at him. At a guy's man, cuts back door. Nice, easy layup. Hazel has seven. Jump out on Chambers. He finds a Coley. Attacking Brace. Brace with another rebound. He has been dominating the glass for the Tigers. Wilson on the drive. The kick out. Hazel for three. Tommy yes. Amaker wants yes. a timeout. Yes. Hazel already in double ball. figures with 10. Really nice, really nice pen penetration there. And here we have a beautiful backdoor cut. Look, he dribble at his man. He cuts back door. Perfect pass. Almost, if, almost threading the needle. Really nice kick out. Ben Hazel with a nice follow through. Ben Hazel's follow through. Tommy Amaker calls a timeout. Ben Hazel, the grandson of the Hall of Fame tight end John Mackey, out of the Baltimore area, in and out of the rotation throughout his career. Last year started 16 games, started the first four games this year. Kind of lost some playing time, but starting with that Penn game has been a big boost off the bench. Yeah, Ben has uh, been through the wars. So now Tommy Amaker looking to grab momentum back and go into the locker room. Here in the final three minutes of the first half after they have dominated play for most of the action here tonight. 15 on the shot clock. Go all the way out on Miller now. Nine on the shot clock. Miller to push off. The step back. Doesn't have to be a three for number 15. That's a big time move there by Miller. And he might have gotten away with a push off there, but that's just good D, better offense. Backdoor cut, but Brace can't catch up with it. And you take a look here. Miller with a nice crossover dribble. Step back, splash. Safe to say there will be a buzz in Charlottesville on Saturday for that one as Virginia puts its perfect record on the line. We take a look at the current ACC standings and got to be surprised to have three losses next to the fourth ranked team in the country. It, it is, but that conference is so tough every night, night in, night out. It's just a, a battle. Notre Dame a bit of surprise at 8-1 and one in conference play. Their one loss to Virginia at home. They also lost out of conference to Providence. All right, Coach Robinson, two and a half left here. What are you looking for if you're Harvard with the lead in the ball? No turnovers. Take care of the ball. 
keep going inside, and when you miss your shot, crash the boards. Three-pointer has been their friend. They've hit six of ten from behind the arc. Now they go inside. Wanda Messi kicks it out to Miller, the man of the night, and that continues. Corbin Miller. Cannot find Corbin Miller. He already has 17 points. That's a little bit more than an X factor. It's really what Harvard's been missing, you know, talking to Coach Amaker. He's trying to find a go-to guy. Hazel looking to answer, but he's short. Rebound, Jonah Travis. Miller has already matched his career high. That happened a couple of years ago against Penn. Here he is with the ball. Really good patience by Harvard. Brace looking at double Saunders. Now he comes off. Saunders now in the paint. Five on the shot clock. He gets called for the shuffle. Corbin Miller just is on fire. A very nice just catch and shoot three with a hand in his face. A career high of 17 back on February 10, 2012. He went on a mission, LDS mission the last two seasons, so mature sophomore. But this is what Tommy Amaker was hoping and expecting from him this year. So now final minute of play. It's been Hazel and Cook for the Tigers here offensively. Now Cook again passes up the three. Kicks it out to the freshman who drives nicely. Good look. Something close, not relying on the three. About a five second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Now Chambers, 15 on the shot clock, looks over at the coach, gets the play, calls it out. 10 to shoot. Luando Messi from the corner. That's a three ball. Great execution by Harvard. They're getting whatever they want, whenever they want to. At the buzzer, good if it goes, well off the mark, but everyone's getting into the act behind the arc for the Crimson. And the reigning Ivy League champs go to the locker room with a 13. With a 10 point lead. They might have changed that to a two, but coming up on the ESPNU College Basketball Halftime Report, we'll catch you up on these stories. We'll have a preview of Saturday's ACC action, and we'll look ahead at Wichita State and Northern Iowa. And of course, we'll have first half highlights and stats from the first 20 minutes of Princeton and Harvard. Harvard. Looking to improve to two and one in Ivy League play and get one on the road. They lead by 10. The halftime report when we return to Princeton. Tiger fans saw their team rally from a double digit deficit to win its first Ivy League game. They'll need to do that again if they want to stay perfect in league action as Harvard leads Princeton by 10 after one half of play. Welcome back to Jadwin Jim, Eamon McEnany along with Craig Robinson. And what did Harvard do right to gain this advantage? You know, they did a couple of things. They executed their offense and usually Princeton's the one who executes their offense. They also used offensive rebounding and turnovers as part of their offense. Both coaches told us earlier that Corbin Miller could be a major factor. Both coaches were 100% right. And everyone on the Tigers were worried about Wesley Saunders, which opened up Corbin Miller. They were, Princeton was all sucked in. There was, a, which le led to a lot of kickouts to Corbin Miller being wide open. Princeton, it's been a two-man show for them offensively. And it's been all threes, too, Eamon. They've got to be able to score inside in the paint and, and convert on some of these backdoor cuts. And Hazel and Stephen Cook keep, keeping the Tigers in striking distance, both with 10. So they have 20 of the 29 points for the Tigers. Miller. Start on the bench as he already matches his career high. Now look for Princeton to run a play where they can get the ball 
to a cutting guy going back door. Now here's Brace. Cook, the floater, air ball. Last touch by Harvard. Harvard's, 19 to shoot. I'm sorry, Eamon. Harvard's doing a great job executing their defensive strategy. It's been very hard for Princeton to get backdoor cuts, forcing them to take shots like that. Dangerous pass, but Weiss has room. If you're Coach Henderson, you're in the locker room with your assistants. Who do you try to get on track here outside of Cook and Hazel? You got to get Hans Brace on track. There he is. One. That's why they call it execution. Princeton basketball at its finest there. The cut and the dish to Miller for the foul. And this is set up by Pete Miller setting a screen and then getting it back. Here's another look at it. And then he goes up strong to get the and one. Can't complete the three-point play, but Cook comes up with the offensive rebound, gets it back. It's a good look. Short. And Osamon runs down the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds. Princeton got a break there. So, so a quick substitution. There's Jonah Travis out on the floor for his Osamon. Yep, clearly stepping out of bounds with the right foot. It seems to happen so much these days, kids stepping out of bounds. Now here's Bell, who's been quiet. Backing in on Chambers. Hits the teardrop. Really nice spin move by Bell. But these are hard baskets for Princeton. This is not how they typically score. Harvard's doing a great job defensively. Now Chambers. Shut off Saunders with Cook. Now they get in his hands. And they turn it over. No whistle against Miller on the bump on the sideline. And on that last play, Amir Bell, good spin dribble. And the refs are letting him play on both ends. Could have been a foul on that play. Could, uh, definitely a foul down on the other end. Tommy Emmerich, very surprised. There was no foul in this Princeton ball. Now the freshman feeling it. That's what Coach Henderson told us about that young man. He has a maturity beyond his rookie status. Yeah, Eamon, you're absolutely right. They absolutely love this kid, and this is why. Get, he can get his own shot, and there's not many Princeton guys who do that. Princeton opens up the half on a 6-0 run, and coming in, the calling card for the Tigers this year has been the three-point shot as we take a look at their conference rank, leading the league in made attempts percentage, and the big one, the percentage of total points, second in the NCAA. But right here on this run, it's been going to the hoop. And it's exactly what Coach Henderson talked about in the locker room. Let's get some baskets down low. Let's get some baskets inside. Stop relying on the three-point shot. And Amir Bell listening to his coach. Freshman coming to life, and Tommy Amaker not happy with the whistle here in the second half, to say the least, staring down the officials during that timeout. He certainly thought Wesley Saunders was fouled on the sideline when he dribbled it out of bounds. Well, I, I know what that's like. <laughs> You're on the road, an important game, and maybe a tad bit more important for Harvard than it is for Princeton, and you want every single call to go the right way. Harvard already with a loss in league play, a bit of a surprise, losing to Dartmouth at home after beating Dartmouth in Hanover. Now Saunders finds Travis Jonah. Jonah Travis, excuse me, for the hoop. And there's... That, that's that's how dangerous Wesley Saunders is. He's not doing a lot scoring, but that's his sixth assist. And that's what Coach Amaker was telling us at the shoot-around, that it's the points he's responsible for, the assists, the ones he scores, the steals that set up baskets. Yeah. Foul goes against Siani Chambers. They still have to find him offensively, though to win this game. Now Brace looking to get on track offensively. A strong drive. Rims out. Again, going, not settling for the three-point shot, going right to the basket. Good drive by Brace. A tough result. 
Saunders attacking, and he'll go to the line. That's a bump against Miller. Saunders with a great job of using his body to draw that foul. That was just, he drew that foul. That was a next level move there. He knew his team needed needed him offensively. How's he going to do it? He's going to get to the line. All right, you mentioned next level. What do you think about Wesley Saunders in the NBA? You know, I think he needs to work on that outside shot because he'd have to be a two guard at the next level. He's got the athleticism. I think he's got the basketball IQ. He's got to be able to put the ball in the basket from outside. He has seven here tonight. Harvard up by eight. Miller gives it back to Cook. Cook gets Saunders up in the air. Now Brace looking to get on track behind the arc, and he does. Great penetration, which led to the kick out three by Brace. Brace now with five, starting to show some life. If you're a Princeton fan, you're looking for Spencer Weiss to join the party as well. Almost intercepted by Cook. Now Rolando Messi gives it back to Saunders. Good ball fake. One pass too many for the Princeton, and Cook comes up with the steal. Bell backs it up. Finally, looks like the Tigers have some energy. Cook running lefty. That looked like an old CYO YMCA move. You know, and I, I, that probably surprises a lot of folks, but. The Princeton Tigers practice those layups every day, and making hard layups is part of the backdoor cut. It's getting a little bit louder in Jadwin now as the Tigers are within three. It's one. Saunders. And Travis and one. So again, Saunders finding the open man. The 1-3-1 had started to give Harvard some problems, and they finally got the ball into the middle, which is what you want to do against the zone, and then down low to, to the guy in the short corner, and then he goes up strong to get the and one. So Henry Caruso on the floor, along with Clay Wilson for the Tigers. Travis. 81% free throw shooter. Completes the three-point play. Harvard 46, Princeton 40, just over 16 minutes left to play. This has been the time that Henry Caruso starts to light it up. And, and, Prin and Princeton needs him to do that today. He's been pretty quiet. He played a huge role in the comeback against Penn. Now Wilson in the corner, being guarded by Miller out there for the Crimson. Brace catches a flat foot. Now 10 on the shot clock for the Tigers. Nowhere near the hoop is Hazel. Gets it to Brace. Wilson, hand in his face, doesn't matter. That's a low two for the senior out of Tulsa. I don't think that's the shot that Coach Henderson drew up, but that's a tough shot for any player, going a right-handed player, going to his right and pulling up off the dribble from the three-point line. He double Saunders, he gets it down to Travis, just like the last possession. More, more penetration for Princeton, kick out threes, what they need. And here at Jadwin, Harvard's been able to keep Princeton at bay mainly because of Jonah Travis. And, and it's been Jonah Travis on the as the recipient of these, but Wesley Saunders has done a great job getting him the ball from the middle of that zone. Travis with nine. He had nine in the loss against Dartmouth. Princeton has done a good job in this first five minutes. No turnovers, points off turnovers. It, it was 12 to 3, Harvard. Now it's 12 7. So they're taking advantage of the Harvard turnovers. 
for a change. Travis with seven of Harvard's nine second half points. That's what Tommy Amaker prides the program on. One of the key words, bench and balance. And the bench is delivered with Travis and Miller. And it's another three-point play for the senior. Harvard switches to a zone. Could be dangerous given how well Princeton shoots from the three-point line. That's where Hazel set up. He has it. Caruso from the corner. Mohando Masi got a piece. They were ready for that defensively. That's now, a taste of Harvard's length. Henry Shooter! Now Miller. Henry, don't help! Travis wants it on the block. He gets it. 15 to shoot. Back it in on Brace. Picks up his dribble. 10 to shoot. Chambers now will regroup with five. Step back, hand in his face. And Caruso comes up with it. Numbers for the Tigers if they hurry. Caruso goes into Miller, and Miller gets called for the foul. Prince doing such a good job now on Miller that Travis, I don't think Travis realized how open he was in the post. He had his man one-on-one, -on -one, one little post move into the middle, and he probably would have gotten a shot off. Now Weiss back on the floor. If you're Coach Henderson, how do you get him going? Yeah, you know, and Spencer Weiss is the type of guard who doesn't have to just rely on his three-point shot. He's He's got some size to him. I'd post him up. He has 11 double-figure scoring games on the season, but a donut right now. They said that wasn't a shooting foul. It's, I'm not really sure about that one. Looked like he was going right to the hoop, but anyway, they'll inbound it with a new shot clock at 35. Here's Cook. This is Saunders momentarily. In trouble. Tough break against Harvard there. Good job by Cook to force the contact. Great. Tommy Emmaker's not buying that whistle. Great hesitation dribble by Cook in the corner. I don't know how much of a foul that was. Certainly the foul bailed him out because he was in no man's land under the hoop. Cook, a 76% free throw shooter. A little under the weather and missed the rowing game. And it started 12 straight before that one. He now has 14. The Tigers hanging around. Princeton putting on a little press of their own here. And now Cook with a tough matchup on Saunders. And he exposed. What a rejection by Cook with the recovery. He elevated to deny a Coley. And now, on the offensive end, Cook doing it all. Here's another nice dump off. And then Cook with a very non-Ivy League block here. That is the block of a dunk. And then down on the other end, another hard layup. That's the second one. Of those. So now Saunders picks up his third with 13.43 left to play. Coach Robinson, if you're Tommy Amaker, how long do you let your Ivy League Player of the Year out there? I think Saunders is the guy, type of guy you just let him play himself back into the rhythm of the game. Too strong there. Huge 50-50 ball, and he'll stay Harvard. Fans wanted an offensive foul. Chambers gets it down to Travis. The reverse. What a half for Jonah Travis. Ten this half. Travis again, the recipient of some very good penetration by the Harvard guards. Hazel can't hit the three. Saunders with a rebound. Now Chambers looking to break down with the crossover. And the freshman reaches in. Five, 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 
second. There's a good no call by the ref there. A little bit of a flop, and then Chambers with a nice dump off to Travis. Pete Miller onto the floor, and Matt Brown checks in for Harvard. Chambers gets a break. Brace goes to the bench for Princeton. Saunders stays out there with those three fouls and has the ball right now. See how quickly they're ready to switch the pick and roll to Travis. Good look for the three for Brown, but he passes it up. Now Miller. Hook comes up with a steal. That pass was telegraphed. Saunders trying to do just a little bit too much. Now Weiss looking to get it in the scoring column, but he cannot. Saunders with a rebound. That, that was one pass and a shot. Just a, not in Princeton's offense. Saunders, though, too strong for Cook. Rips it away. And then gets the foul. And what's the best way to get yourself going when, you're not, when your shot's not going in? Offensive rebound. There, Saunders gets his own rebound, takes it up, and gets the and one. Saunders, and one. And he completes the three-point play, and just like that, Harvard back up by seven, and Saunders in double figures with ten. Princeton got away from getting the ball inside. Here's Hazel. Continues. The hot hand he had in the first half with the straightaway three. He has 13. Wilson picking up in the backcourt on Miller. Now Cook. Miller drops it. Wilson can't come up with it. 20 to shoot for the Crimson. The Tigers have decided to get up on Miller. Now Coley out of control, but it doesn't matter. Able to keep his balance and draw the foul. Really tough shot for O'Coley here. Nice dish off, up and one. Second half for Harvard, the story's been the old school three-point play. Yeah, this is they've had four and ones this half. And when you can't make them from the outside, take it inside and get the old-fashioned three-point play. Tommy Amaker, six and nine at Harvard in his career against Princeton. Now Coley goes to the line. He has struggled there this year, 44%. Preston has to be ready for a long rebound here. He says, take that, McEnany Robinson, I'm ready. Didn't look like a 44% <laughs> foul shooter with that one. Bell out there with Grace, Hazel, Weiss, and Wilson. Harvard doing a good job protecting against the backdoor cuts, playing underneath their men, not letting them cut in front of them. Hazel gets a snap again with the right hand. Man, he has 15. When you can shoot the way Ben Hazel's been shooting, it opens up your drive. He has 15, his career high 18, but now the Tigers need to stop. Travis being guarded by Brace. Nice spin move. Wow, nice up and under. Move by Travis. A look to the middle and then spin back and reverse layup. Nice. Wilson from the corner. Short. That looked like it barely was going to hit the rim. Saunders draws two. Offensive rebound to Coley. 
Travis has had a great half here. Looks to the middle and then a really quick spin move. Great footwork there. And then gets an up and under over Brace. He was hurt in the middle of the season, missing six games from November 20th to December 8th. Again, this is a team going without Kenyatta Smith, their starting center in the middle. Injured his knee and his ankle against Boston College, but right now up by seven with the ball. They get Penn tomorrow. Princeton hosts Dartmouth. A critical week in the weekend in the Ivy League. Travis with the left short. Saunders again just rips it away from the Tigers and again goes up strong for the hoop. Tough shot. Wesley Saunders saying, I'm not I'm not shooting the ball well, but I can get boards and I can get assists. And Coach Henderson takes a timeout. Down by nine with 9.24 left to play. Wesley Saunders doing it down low. You got the miss by Travis, and then look at Saunders just doesn't give up on the play. Cook 6'5, 185, Saunders 6'5, 218. Men among boys on those rebounds the last couple of times. Saunders, a real playmaker, just doesn't always have to do it with his shot. And a reminder that ESPNU Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy features a Big 12 showdown at 2 Eastern as TCU takes on Iowa State. You can also see that live on Watch ESPN. Iowa State has a center, George Niang, which would be a great Princeton-type center, can shoot from the outside, handles the ball really well, and he can score down low. So Coach Henderson changing things up. No brace, no Weiss. Down by nine, 9.24 left to play. Going small here. Bell picks up his dribble. Finds Caruso. Backdoor cut to Bell. Come here, Bell, from Henry Caruso. Great backdoor cut. Even better pass. Good patience by Prince in there. Bell now has eight. Pick up in the backcourt again out of the timeout. Miller thought about it. Steps inside. He'll go to the line. That was a la Reggie Miller. It's a great pump fake. When you can make shots, you use your pump fake to get a closer shot. I didn't think Wilson had to follow him there. He might have missed that shot. He hadn't taken one that close all night long. So I hadn't taken one in the second half before that. 17 fouls now for the Tigers. Race back on the floor for Wilson. So Miller has a new career high. 19. Harvard's been looking for an outside presence. It looks like Miller can provide that. And now Brace, given just enough space, they didn't respect the shot. He made him pay. Now is getting to the time where you have to get stops. You can't just trade baskets. Chambers. Race with another rebound. Bell looking to force the issue. Gets it back to Brace. Kicks it out. Now Cook on the drive. Brace will take it this time. Would have liked to see Brace take that one in on himself. The drive that he kicked out. Now Miller with the hand in his face. 25 on the shot clock. Chambers gets bumped and coughs it up. Coach Henderson wanting his team to pick up the pace here with 7.40 left. Down by six. High off the glass and well off the mark, but Travis loses it. They want some help on the call. Princeton ball. So Alvin Cox asked for help from Dennis Olaco, and he said last touched by Jonah Travis. So Princeton will get the ball back, down by six. 
735 left to play. Harvard on the road with a six point lead, just over seven and a half left to go. In their third Ivy League game of the year, and a reminder that the journey to the tourney presented by Sonic continues on Saturday at 7 on ESPN. The fourth ranked Duke Blue Devils look to end second ranked Virginia's perfect season, also live on Watch ESPN. Of course, Tommy Amaker played for Coach K, was a part of his first Final Four team with Johnny Dawkins, Mark Allery, and Jay Billis, was a longtime assistant at Duke before becoming a head coach. I thought it was interesting. We asked him today what he'd take away from Coach K and what he took to Harvard with him. He said, you want to build it on two things, the institution and defense. And Coach K has done it not only on the college level, but watching what he's done with USA Basketball is just fantastic. Knocked away. There's some of that defense. Saunders comes up with another steal right back to Miller. A rare miss tonight by Miller. So Princeton dodges... A little bit more misery there. Cook, nice move. Kick out. Three. Can't hit. Loose ball. Last touch by Brace. Amen. I, I, I just don't like the strategy of taking threes. I thought Cook had a layup there. And instead, he kicks it out to Hazel for a three. Take the, the, the sure two. Chambers quickly the other way. That's knocked away. Here's Hazel pulling off the brakes. And as soon as I say that, he attacks short. And Saunders again, too strong. Good hesitation off the dribble there. Saunders, the long two. Coley can't corral the rebound. Princeton ball. The lead is only six. No need to panic, no need to just chuck up threes. Run your offense, get a nice, easy shot around the basket. There, this time Cook will go for the two and he'll go to the line. Saunders now picks up his fourth with six and a half left to play. I'm obligated to ask you again. Do you keep him in there? You know, I would keep him in. I think Coach Amaker is going to take him out. You know, it, it really depends on the individual player. And I just think Saunders is, is in control of himself. And without him out there making plays, they're at a, at a, at a real disadvantage, Harvard is. Do you think the lead plays a factor in his decision? I think so. I think the fact that they're up with six minutes, they're going to try and get to the under four timeout and then put them back in. Cook now has 19. Harvard running their offense, trying to use the clock in their favor. Nine on the shot clock. Wanda Massey sets a screen. Chambers finds the open man. What a cut. That was some veteran leadership on that possession by Siani Chambers. Siani Chambers left-handed, but when the ball's in his right hand, he's a better dribbler. Now Cook. Back to Brace. Cook loses it. Good defense by Chambers. Gets it back up. Weiss. That felt like a force from the minute he decided to shoot. Now he's pressing. He's, he, he's feeling like he needs to help this team, and he took a tough shot there. So again, Princeton not able to take advantage of Saunders on the bench with four fouls. And you wonder if that plays into the patient offense now that Harvard has shown on two straight possessions. Chambers pulls up. Offensive rebound, Brown. So that'll buy some more time for Harvard. And they'll bring it out and start it all over again. Another 35 seconds. Here's Brown, who also played on the football team. You talk about a successful collegiate career. How about three Ivy hoop titles to go along with three Ivy football titles? It can't be too many guys who've no, done that. don't think so. Brown made his only touchdown catch of the season here against Princeton in the 49-7 win. 
that here's what I mean with Chambers with the ball in his right hand. Just a fantastic. He knew he was going to Coley the whole time. Just right hand, left-handed player dribbling with his right hand. Nice dish off there. Amir Bell picks up his third foul. One-on-one -on -one now for Chambers. Junior out of Minnesota hits. 85% free throw shooter. Ivy League Rookie of the Year back in 2013. And he's not having the greatest shooting night either, but his playmaking is affecting the game. He has been struggling from the field, coming in just 26% from the field in the last three games. And now with Saunders on the bench, Harvard able to increase its lead. Bell the pull up, short, rebound Mwando Messi. Chambers in no rush. Now the tough part about the Princeton offense is when they're behind like this, they don't have a real way to generate more offense. Under four minutes to play. Harvard looking to make it three straight against Princeton. Brown with the ball fake, Grace flying into his face, airborne. Cook has been the offense, a running left-hander again. He gets the drop. That looked like a move from the, the beer league. <laughs> really nice. Really nice move going to his left. Never puts the ball in his right hand, just keeps it. Goes off the wrong foot and lays it up with the left hand. Very nice move. He has 21. Down by six, and you mentioned the offense is not built to come from behind, so what do you have to do defensively to force the issue? I think you've got to pick up full court. Maybe you switch to the 1-3-1 one, and try and generate a turnover that way. But it's still with down six with three minutes to go. Play good, solid D, make a miss, get the rebound. Come down, run your offense, try and get a two-pointer. Let's if see a, if Tommy If a three-pointer is there, then you, you you take it. But if it's not there, you want to get a two-pointer going to the basket or get fouled. Tommy Amaker keeps Wesley Saunders on the bench with 340. And Tommy Amaker, not his first rodeo, obviously, and his team knows how to close out games on the road. They in, won here last year for the first time in a long time. In order to win in the Ivy League, you got to definitely win at home, and you want to split on the road or sweep on the road. And Tommy's done a great job at sweeping the road. They'll head south to Philadelphia tomorrow and take on Penn. But right now, looking to close this one. Close this one out. Up six with the ball. Princeton playing back on defense. A little surprising right now. Let Harvard milk the clock. Miller, tough shot. Doesn't touch anything, doesn't matter. Princeton comes up with it. So now, Cook. Over to Miller. Under three to play, it's a four-point game. Very familiar, very similar to that Penn game for Princeton. Great drive and dish there. And that's it. Wesley Saunders now has the towel off and is at the scores table. So he will return. Good patience here by Harvard, not forcing anything, letting the clock work for him. Nine on the shot clock. Chambers, crossover, creating himself. Guts. Big shot. Now here's Miller. Back to Hazel. Caruso's been very quiet. Not even looking at the basket. He's got to take a look at that to make it work. Here he is with a good look at a three. I know you said you didn't have to take the three, but that was a great look. Yeah. Now, that was a great look. Caruso and Weiss having a tough time tonight. And, and if you're Princeton, you can't win with both of those guys not shooting the ball well.
So Wesley Saunders will be back on the floor for he hopes the final 149. Harvard showing why it's been so successful on the road for Princeton making things interesting. Yeah, and, and here's a nice driving kick here. Driving dish, I mean, and then Chambers just lining his man up and shoots right over him. And again, he's not shooting the ball well, but they needed to have that basket. And, you know, there are guys who come who can make plays when they're needed. And Chambers is one of those guys. You go back to what we discussed earlier. Wesley Saunders, the best player, but Siani Chambers starting to show why Tommy Emmerich says he's the most important player. Precisely. And his three years here, he's won a lot of games, been in a lot of situations and knows how to run a team. So again, why this weekend is so critical. Harvard already with a home loss on the docket to Dartmouth. Coming in Yale and Princeton, the only teams still perfect in Ivy League play, obviously, albeit early. But with tough games at Princeton and Penn, this is a big weekend for the defending Ivy League champs. Yeah, even last year, Princeton started 0-4. And there you see the strategy. They're going to send him to the line. So there's a break in the action when we return. Matt Brown at the line for Harvard. Harvard looking to close out its third straight win over Princeton. Up six with 140 left to go. And we started talking about the reigning Ivy League player of the year, Wesley Saunders. And he's done a little bit of everything again tonight. I mean, he has close to a triple-double tonight. And what's been really impressive is are not the points. To me, it's the rebounds and the eight assists that he has tonight. Take a look at stuff in the stat sheet. 12, 7, and 8. Go along with another steal, which is what he's known for on the defensive end. So. And Spencer Weiss there, he's only taken three shots tonight. And your best player, your leading scorer in a game like this at home against the reigning Ivy League champs can't just take three shots. So now Harvard's been perfect at the line this half, 10 for 10, but it's up to Matt Brown to keep that going. One and one here for the Harvard Crimson. And he cannot, so the door is open. I'd still be looking to get a, a two, a quick two. Still plenty of time. I think the key word there was quick, right? Brace looks to do that. Wanda Messi on defense, stripped. Saunders again, another steal. Le leads the Ivy League coming in in steals, and he came up with a huge one there. There's that guy again. In talking to the Princeton coaching staff, they want Hans Brace to not just be a guy who settles for shooting three-pointers. They want him to be able to get down low and down, down in there on the paint and make a little hook shot. It'll help open up this three. So now back-to-back -back misses on the line for Harvard. Still a two-possession game for a team that shoots the three well. But that'll change with a make here by Sorns. If that doesn't happen. Princeton, two timeouts left. Brace gets a look. Too strong. How does he open? How does he that open? Now Chambers takes a timeout. So 64 seconds left here. And a reminder that Sunday on ESPNU, the Pac-12 takes center stage. As Utah squares off with USC at 2.30 Eastern, you can see the 11th ranked team in the country also live on Watch ESPN. They had a tough loss against UCLA. So we've talked about it. Harvard with a big weekend here. On the road here, down to the Palestra to take on Penn, and they stay on the road at Brown and at Yale. Another week on the road, and the way the Ivy League is with just 14 games, every now and then you have a time where you're on the road back-to-back -back weekends, and those are the important weekends. You want to come away 500 or better. 
All right, so Harvard down to one timeout if they get in trouble here. Rwando Masita inbound. Gets it to Miller. Final minute of action. Chambers weaving his way past the defense. And now they foul Chambers. 85% free throw shooter coming into tonight's game. Well, the strategy there was hopefully try and get a 10 second call, and if you don't get it, then you got to foul in the front court. Vetcher knocks it down. He had 13 and 8 in the win at Jadwin last year and playing a key role down the stretch here to salt this one away. And if you're Princeton, now you're thinking three point shot every time down. He hits them both. Harvard closing in on a third straight win over Princeton. Back to back wins here at Jadwin, but the freshman. Hits one high off the glass, Amir Bell. Makes it a six-point ball game. Out of East Brunswick, New Jersey, decided to stay close to home and go to the Ivy League. And Princeton trying to pull one out of the hat. Remain perfect, but if they fall to one and one, they welcome Dartmouth. This is a Dartmouth team that won at Harvard. And you ask guys who know the Ivy League, that wasn't really a surprise. They think Dartmouth's in the mix this year. Yeah, it's a, and they've always played Harvard really well. And uh, so that, that, that game was a surprise in that Harvard was up 14, and, uh, 14 or 16 and lost the lead and lost the game. But uh, Princeton is not going to have a cakewalk tomorrow against Dartmouth. And folks, you heard me right. The game is tomorrow. The Ivy League plays on Friday night and turns around and plays again on Saturday night. So now Moando Messi gets it into Saunders. And they foul him. All right, you coached at Brown. Take us into that. We can talk about the student angle because obviously you played in the league as well. But the coach, you guys are used to breaking down tape and scouting reports. What's the adjustment for the coaching staff? Well, the adjustment what we did was we worked on the Saturday team on Monday and Tuesday and then the Friday team on Wednesday and Thursday so the scout would be fresh in their minds for the Friday game and then at the shoot around on Saturday you, refer, you, you reminded them of what you talked about so you bring them right back for a shoot around absolutely and there's some coaches who don't some coaches let their let their team rest but um, when I was coaching at Brown, we always used the Saturday for a walkthrough. Not a real practice, but we walked through the other team's scouting report. All right, still a two-possession game with 43.7 seconds left. And it remains that way. Grace stays in bounds. So the door is slightly ajar for the Tigers. Grace looking for the quick two, rejected. Saunders, have we, did we say he's done a little bit of everything? Just a, he's playing like the Ivy League player of the year. But this was some athletic play. That ball looked like it was past him. And finally Brace drives to the basket, and then Saunders from behind tips the ball off the rim there. Real nice drive. That's what you're supposed to do in that situation. But look how Saunders gets up. Just a very good all-around player. Now Harvard has gone cold at the line, just two of the last seven, but that changes with Chambers. He now has ten, so five Harvard players in double figures. That's the recipe right there for Coach Amaker. Bench and balance. I've watched Harvard play. That's the first foul shot I've seen Chambers miss. Before the shot, so that'll be on the... No free throws. No, the, it'll be one-on-one, -on -one, excuse me. So they will be able to have an attempt to chip away at this deficit without the clock running. Bell, an 88% free throw shooter. Well, Eamon, you don't want to ever say you can afford to lose a game. But again, in this league where you play a true round robin, 
Princeton could afford to lose this game a little bit more than Harvard could have afforded to lose it. High arcing shot for Bell. Last year, Princeton started out 0-4, and they were out of it the second weekend. And that's the difference between playing in this league and playing in another league where you're just sort of a third of the way through. And also you have a conference tournament that maybe you can make up some hay in. Precisely. Looks like they tried to miss that one on purpose. And now Muando Masi will go to the line. So Harvard will win its third straight over Princeton. The Tigers will fall to 8-10, and 1-1 one and one in the Ivy League. Really have to applaud Tommy Amaker uh, because let me tell you, the Harvard basketball program hasn't seen this much success ever. And uh, he's truly changed the culture, both on the court and off the court with the alums. And the, he was talking to us at shoot around about how he's got people from all different sides of campus who would never sit together in the lunchroom who all come to the games and cheer for the team together. They hadn't been to the NCAA tournament since 1946, and now it's almost expected in the Ivy League that Harvard's going to go and possibly win a game. They have won NCAA tournament games each of the last two seasons. Well, showing the talent. But it's going to be a little too little, a little too late for the Tigers here at home. Going to have to foul right away. Oh, they come up with the steal. Oh, he steps out of bounds. Cook. Couldn't keep his feet in the air. So let's see. Yeah. Uh... Ooh, that's a tough call. And they're supposed to check it with the la within the last two minutes. They're not sure. This time they do come up with the steal. Wilson able to throw it in. Off of Miller. So down by four, 8.4 seconds left. What an effort by Clay Wilson. And Eamon, you know, th there are different philosophies on taking the ball out underneath your own basket. And I always try and avoid the inbounder throwing it to the guy on the same side because there's just not enough room. You try and get it on the other side where there's more room. And if you have to throw it up the court, you can throw it up the court. And at least you get a chance to set up your D. That's what I thought they were going to do because Travis broke deep, but they didn't want to risk it. Coming up next, Monmouth against Fairfield. Of course, a Princeton tie in that ball game with Sidney Johnson. But again, you, you can't really draw up a four-point play, so what do you do? Well, if I'm Coach Henderson, I'm thinking they're not going to run and jump at a guy shooting a three. So I'm, I'm going to try and take a quick three and hope it goes in. If it goes in, foul right away. So Brace coming in a 38% free throw shooter. Weiss a 44% three point shooter with 35 from behind the arc. Bell very good behind the arc as well with 28 made coming into this game shooting 33%. Harvard just doesn't need to foul. Don't foul. That's probably what they said in the huddle 15 times. Do not foul. And instead, it's another steal by Saunders. What a fitting way for this ball game to end. The league leader in steals. I mean, and that was just a, a swipe. Cook, it looked like Cook had the ball in his hands, and Saunders just swiped it out of there. Uh, he's putting his bid in for another Ivy League Player of the Year award. Well, he certainly played the part here tonight on the road when his team was looking to bounce back. You got another jacket or trophy? What do you give to that club, <laughs> the guys who joined the two-time Ivy League Player of the Year club? You get a handshake. No, no smoking jacket <laughs> like the Saturday Night Live guys who hosted eight times or something like that. Bell keeps firing and keeps hitting. 
But with point four left. Luando Messi wants us to go to our filler materials. He takes a timeout. Better safe than sorry, I guess. Yeah. This will be a full timeout. This is Amir, why they are so high on this kid. Uh, I mean, Amir Bell had, didn't take any threes all game and taken his last two and made his last two. That just tells me he should be looking to be a little bit more aggressive earlier on in the game. Well, certainly he has not been timid as a freshman. That's what the coaching staff tells us, that he has not backed down that practice, you know, to the veterans. He has been a major force this season. Well, the... the a couple of practices I've seen, he's very vocal for a kid who's just a freshman. All right, so what are you really drawing up here? Point four, can't you basically just throw it up in the air? Can yeah. you just throw it in? I mean, you're up three. What could Harvard, what could Princeton do, even if they come up with a that, steal? That, that's something that we, as coaches, debate all the time. You throw it to half court. By the time somebody touches it, the clock runs out, the game's over. You'd be surprised how many people intuitively don't think of that in the in the in the mix of the game. Uh, I mean, I guess the only way Harvard could win this, lose this game, is if they just throw it out of bounds and no time comes off the clock. And then, and then Princeton throws it at the rim right. and gets a layup. So, don't panic. Don't get a five-second call. Whatever you do, throw it down. So, if something crazy happens, it happens away from your own basket. So the officials are at the scores table to see if there's any more time left. That looks pretty good. Point four left. You, you might get a bump on Ruando Messi and send Bell to the line. Point six. <laughs> Can't do that yet. So it's going to stay point four. Let's see who. It looks like Ruando Messi is going to inbound it or attempt to inbound it. Someone's going to break deep. And Harvard will have its second Ivy League win of the season. There it is to Chambers, and it's all over. Final score, Harvard 75. So it was the and bench, the it was the balance, and it was the Ivy League Player of the Year. Just terrific game, game by Wesley Saunders. Game time is 6 o'clock. He does it with his scoring, he does it with his rebounding, he does it with assist, and he does it with steals. And they get 33 off the bench, 19 from Miller, 14 from Travis. So Tommy Amaker's ball club picks up win number 12 and improves to 2-1 and one in the Ivy League. Once again, the final score, Harvard 75, Princeton 72. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Monmouth against Fairfield. Harvard will travel south to take on Penn at the Palestra. Princeton post Dartmouth. For Craig Robinson and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Eamon McEnany. Harvard wins again at Jadwin. So long from Nassau Street.